Welcome to Redbeard and the Den of Tools. Hi to hello guys and gals, it's Red, your friendly neighborhood tool bear, and yeah, we're finally back from Montana. Or I should say, uh, the older cub and I are back. The missus and the two baby cubs, they're still up there uh, doing some work on the old homestead up north. But in the meantime, let's talk about something a little bit more exciting, which is about how we almost didn't make it home. All right, it wasn't all that bad, but it could have been worse. So what happened was we had a blowout on the old utility trailer. And no, it's not a Harbor Freight. Everyone keeps asking if it was a Harbor Freight. It was a TSC. It's the 5x8. I got some other videos on this trailer. And let me just state right off. First of all, I feel the blowout was my fault. I don't feel it was a problem at all with the... Uh, with the tire or the quality of the construction, I have been overly pleased with this trailer. If you take care of your equipment and you check it regularly, you should be fine. It, it shouldn't be an issue. Now, luckily enough, I did have a spare with me and I made sure of that because I knew it was gonna be a long road trip and stuff. And we've had the trailer for a while. It's been a few years now and it's been in the, like, the extreme heat here in Vegas. Uh, which just does a real number on tires. You know, forget how much tread you got on it. If that thing's been baking in the heat, it's only going to last so long. And then on top of that, we drive it up to Montana and, and through the mountains and stuff all the time. So we'd go through cold and go through altitude changes. And, and as I said, you know, and I'll get to it further, but honestly, I do feel, let me just state right now, as I stated before, this this was the bear's fault for not uh, not paying attention. Now, just to see how bad this blowout was... It, as you can see, it was a minor inconvenience. <laughs> yeah, this happened about an hour and a half south of the greater metropolitan area of Salt Lake City. So we were in the middle of farmland, nowhere, no services, nothing. I got lucky. The blowout happened as we were just coming up on an exit ramp, an, an exit to nowhere. Uh, but they did have a pullout for semis and stuff there. There was something for chains, uh, hooking up chains and whatnot. So we were able to take advantage of that space. It took the older Cub and I about, uh, I think it was 55 minutes. We timed it. And I'll be honest, a good portion of that time was just digging tools out of the back of the trailer because we had it packed pretty tight. And the, and the majority of the time was really trying to hammer that dent back out of that fender. That was my biggest issue. Let me show you some more of the details here. Okay, this is after we got home. I've pulled the uh, the tire out of here, put it on some sunlight here, so you can get a really good eye for the detail of the level of destruction that we saw. This thing's gone. It is, it's just there's nothing left of it but the sidewalls, but they still managed to stay there somehow. Now, if you have a trailer like this, one thing you need to consider is what kind of jack you have. Don't rely on the jack that may come with your car or truck. My truck is a full-size Ram 1500, and it comes with your standard scissor jack, just like the one pictured here. And now, as you look at this older picture that I took of the trailer, you can see what kind of clearance we're dealing with, and that should make you understand that a scissor jack like this just isn't going to work. You're not going to get the kind of clearance. It's not going to get the trailer high enough off the ground. Luckily for this trip, I had an ace up my sleeve in the form of a vintage jack for the Northern Pacific Railroad and accompanying jack stand. One of the unique things about this jack is it's got two lifting points, one at the top like a standard jack and a foot lower down that helps you get under you know, some shorter items. That was an important feature for us on uh, this trip because the typical lifting point would be way too high for this trailer and that lower lifting foot allowed us to get it well off the ground, get underneath it and get it up there then get that jack stand in there for safety. I got a close-up here of the jack stand for you. It's often referred to as a screw jack or also a house slash barn jack which is what it's used for a lot these days. Now to give you guys some background on this I happen to have taken some pictures of the tread before we left. I was actually getting information off the tire to buy the right spare tire but it allows you to see the condition of the tire at least externally speaking you know who knows with the heat and such but as you can see, it's got plenty of tread. It looks like it's in good shape. It looks like it's properly inflated. Here we are loaded up. This is right before we left. Everything's good to go. It, and it looked fine from this, you know. The only problem here actually was that damn cheap tarp. That freebie tarp didn't even make it from Las Vegas to Salt Lake City before it started to go. 
we are forced to stop in Idaho and pick up a heavy duty tarp. So on this trip, we start off, you know, here in Vegas and in, in Nevada, and we went all the way through Arizona, Utah, into even sunny Idaho, Wyoming, yeah, that's the Grand Tetons, and Montana. Clean back. Oh. Yep, and even nap time. <laughs> I'm going to catch hell for that one. Now here's a picture of the right side tire after we got back. And if you look at the two outside treads, they're virtually gone. My guess is this is exactly what happened to the other tire, although at this point we can't tell. The only thing I can think is that the change in the heat uh, and temperature and the change in the altitude really affected the uh, the pressure in the tire. I checked it on the way up. I checked it while we were there. I checked it as we were leaving, but I didn't check it after we left Yellowstone, which at that time we were at an altitude of nearly 7,000 feet. And the only thing that I can surmise is that in the change in elevation and the change in temperatures, we lost some significant pressure in these tires. Or, you know, it could have been something to do with the heat, but as you can see, there was extreme tread loss on the outside of the tire, and I think that had to be the key issue, we, you know, in causing this blowout. Well, there you have it. We were safe and sound. We got back on the road and got home thanks to uh, our uh, vintage equipment. I just wanted to post this video to show you guys that you know it is important to take care of your equipment and then when you don't the second you the second you turn your back on it it'll bite you in the fuzzy tail so learn a lesson from the bear don't do what i did and you know stay on top of it check your tire pressures check your treads you know especially on these smaller tires think about it they're they're doing a lot more work than that bigger tire you know all things considered all right enough preaching you guys take care Videos will be back on track now that we're back from Montana. I got my whole editing rig all set up. I'm downloading all sorts of videos. Yeah, we had some bandwidth issues, and I do apologize. Thanks for staying with us. And uh, sorry for the confusion with the whole live stream last week. The bear lost a day somewhere in there. Not sure where I left it. I, I looked under the couch. I looked around. I, I still can't find it. Anyway, take care, everyone. And as always, shine on. Thanks for watching the video. If you'd like to help support the channel, the easiest way is our one, two, three method. First, chomp that like button, give us a thumbs up, spread the word with a share, and subscribe and ring the bell. Remember, if you don't ring the bell, YouTube doesn't really believe that you want to watch the videos. But maybe you'd like to take it a step further. Maybe you want to go over to Patreon and consider subscribing to the channel. For only a dollar a month, you can become a Black Bear member and help support the Den of Tools. Also, YouTube now allows us to sell merch directly on each video. Yeah, if you scroll down below the video, right where you see the description, right below that, you should start seeing a little pop-up window that shows you some of the Denna Tools merch. Or pick up a copy of the Home Distillers Workbook, your guide to making moonshine, whiskey, vodka, rum, and so much more. And we still have the DeBear shirts available. Links to those items, as always, are in the description below.